जय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य गौरचंद्र जया दैत चंद्र जया जय नित्यानंद जय जय गदाधर जय श्रीनिवास जय मुकुंद वासुदेव जय हरिदास Hare Krishna. It's so nice to be here with all of you and inaugurate this wonderful series on every town and village where we're going to be exploring the principles and strategies that Srila Prabhupada has used to spread the Krishna consciousness movement and that are directly linked to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own strategies and principles. in inaugurating and spreading krishna consciousness and how this will lead to his holy names being heard in every town and village so to start off our program i'm very very pleased to introduce uh, bhakti vigyan goswami maharaj who is joining us from i'm not sure where actually maharaj where you are in the world right now in vrindavan okay so govardhan empowered place um and and you're going to be leading us off uh i'm not going to spend time introducing you too much there's a lot of information in our bios uh, description you can all of our viewers if you want to read uh but basically maharaj is uh, one of the leading devotees in our society leading the devotees in in russia and and other places um so many different services you have and written uh, both in in writing and in oral and in video and so many things so i won't spend much time people can research and 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 learn more um as they like but rather ask you to introduce your topic before that i thought we we talked about this a little bit before you came on that uh, considering the world situation right now it might be appropriate that we all offer some prayers for the devotees in in ukraine um and pray that uh, the kali yuga uh, characteristic doesn't uh, go further so hare krishna hare krishna so thank you your topic is how the uh, viral effect we've all heard about viral effects uh, particularly in relationship to to social media but i think you're going to be telling us how that same principle can expand and to extend itself into spreading krishna consciousness and spreading the sankirtan movement in other ways so i'm looking forward to it myself and without further ado i'll ask uh, that you please take us away thank you hari krishna hari krishna thank you pancharatna prabhu thank you for inviting me to give this talk in, uh, in this series of uh, lectures before uh, gor purnima so i'll uh, read a few verses from chaitanya charitamrita to start this talk which explain the method of spreading krishna consciousness adopted by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in his uh, south india uh, travels and then try to explain the uh, the philosophy behind it and uh, uh, if you can call it technique although there is nothing technical about what i'm going to speak about <laughs> so it's not a trick it's not a technique but anyway uh let's read a few verses that's the verses from the beginning of uh, the seventh chapter of madhya lila chaitanya charitamrita the lord's tour of south india starting with the verse 97 very important verses 97 98 99 and maybe a few more uh जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नितानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नितानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नितानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद 
Slok Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, E sloka pari pathe chayala gora hari loka deke pathe kahe bola hari hari. Chanting this verse, the famous verse Krishna 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 he Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, known as Gora Hari, went on his way. As soon as he saw someone, he would request him to chant Hari, Hari, Bola, Hari, Hari. <clears throat> Say Loka Prema Matta, Hana, uh, Haya Bali Hari Krishna, Prabhura uh, Pache Sangi, Yaya Darshana Satrishna. Whoever heard Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chant Hari Hari also chanted the holy name of Lord Hari and Krishna. In this way, they followed the Lord very eager to see him. Uh, Katakshani Rahi Prabhu Tari Alingya. Uh, Vidaya Karila Tari uh, Shakti Sanchariya. After some time, the Lord would embrace these people and bid them return home, having invested each of them with spiritual potency. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In his Amrita Pravahabhasya, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that this spiritual potency is the essence of the pleasure potency and the knowledge potency. By these two potencies, one is empowered with devotional service. Lord Krishna himself or his representative, the unalloyed devotee, can mercifully bestow these combined potencies upon any man. Being thus endowed with such potencies, one can become an unalloyed devotee of the Lord. Anyone favored by Lord Sri uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was empowered with this Krishna Shakti. Thus, the Lord's followers were able to preach Krishna consciousness by divine grace. And a couple more verses. Say Jana Nijagrami Koriya Gaman Krishna Bali Hase Kande Nachya Nukshan. Each of these empowered persons would return to his own village always chanting the holy name of Krishna and sometimes laughing, crying and dancing. Yari deki tari kahi, kaha Krishna nam, ei mata vaishnava kaila saba nidja gram. Such an empowered person would request everyone and anyone, whomever he saw, to chant the holy name of Krishna. In this way, all the villagers would also become devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In order to become an empowered preacher, one must be favored by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or his devotee, the spiritual master. One must also request everyone to chant the Maha Mantra. In this way, such a person can convert others to Vaishnavism, showing them how to become pure devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then one more verse. Uh, Gramantara hoite dekite aila yata jan tanra darsana kripaya haya tanra sam. People from different villages who came to see such an empowered individual would become like him simply by seeing him and receiving the mercy of his glance. <laughs> Намам Вишну Падая Кришна Приштая Бутале Шримати Бхактивиданта Свами Нитинамине Намасте Сарасвати Деви Горавани Прачарине Нервишеша Шумнявади Пашчатя Деша Тарине Шри Кришна Чайтани Прабхунита Нанда Шедвай Тагда Тхара Шиваса Дигоура Бхакта Вринда Харе Кришна Харе Кришна 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 Харе 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 Рама Харе Рама 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 Харе Харе Сой uh, I'm very honored to be with all of you and to speak on this topic because we're all followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we want to follow his example and his ideal. 
And Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explains in this uh, initial chapter uh, introducing Lord's travel in South India, how Lord Chaitanya uh, converted everyone uh, into the uh, pure devotional service while traveling. And uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami specifically before explaining particular episodes and stories of his travel, he says that uh, this event, which we just uh, read, uh, which he will continue a little more uh, elaborate, uh, this event would happen in every place. He doesn't repeat himself again and again and again, but in the very beginning he says that uh, uh, wherever the Lord would travel, he would uh, request everyone to chant the holy name, uh, for some time, people attracted by his personality and by his beauty and by his uh, ecstatic moods would follow him, uh, chanting the holy name. And then all of a sudden, the Lord would uh, turn around, embrace them, empower them, and would send them back home. Not to Godhead, but to their village. <laughs> and in their village, they would do the same trick again and again. And as uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, in this way, uh, everyone in South India has become a devotee. Now, sometimes I myself was wondering, uh, was it really true? Is it not an exaggeration? Uh, because sometimes, you know, uh, you know, the biographers can be carried uh, away by their moods and ecstasies, and they start exaggerating uh, some powers. But uh, I wanted to uh, explain my personal experience, which actually proved to me that uh, this, uh, which is explained by uh, Krishna Das Kviraj Goswami in this chapter of uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita is actually true. Uh, I myself was traveling quite often in uh, uh, South Indian states and specifically in Kerala. And one particular phenomenon I noticed, uh, actually the first time I uh, encountered this phenomenon was in the birthplace of Shankaracharya. I came to visit this uh, little village where Shankaracharya, uh, first great Acharya of Kali Yuga, uh, took his birth. And uh, there was a Gurukul, there is a Gurukul there in this village, and um, there is, uh, you know, approximately 100 uh, children who are studying Upanishads there in this Gurukul. And we came <clears throat> with uh, Bhaktivinoda Maharaj, actually, uh, at the lunchtime, and uh, for nothing else, we sat down to take prasadam in this Gurukul, in this Mayavad, place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and before eating prasadam, uh, they started chanting prayers. Uh, as you may imagine, they didn't chant Sharira, Bidijal, Jodhendriya, Tahikal. Instead of that, they started reciting Upanishads. It went enormously long time. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they went on and on and on reciting some, you know, unending Upanishads. But at the end, when they stopped uh, reciting Upanishads, all of a sudden they started chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, and chanted it three times and then started taking prasadam. Everyone was relieved and uh, uh, under the auspicious sound of Hari Nam, we also took prasadam. So I was wondering, you know, why do they chant Hare Krishna there? They're supposed to be Mayavadis, they are core Mayavadis in the birthplace of Mayavad philosophy in Kali Yuga. Then uh, I was traveling in different temples and most of the temples in um, uh, Kerala especially, they run by either uh, non-Sampradayic people, people who don't belong to any Sampradaya, or they are under very strong influence of uh, Mayavad Sampradaya, even though it's Krishna's temple. Like, for example, the uh, famous temple uh, in Guru Vair. You know, every day uh, there is an elephant procession uh, for the Lord Guru Vair. 
And again, uh, and all, even though all the priests and everyone there, they're all Mayavadis. They worship Lord Krishna, but they're Mayavadis. They worship in their own way. But again, uh, with great surprise, I noticed that during the procession, the only thing which they chant is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And then in other temples, I, uh, I saw the same phenomenon. Then I came to Udupi, uh, which is uh, the place, uh, the headquarters of uh, uh, Dvaita Vada, of, uh, of Madhvacharya, uh, and there, in Udupi, during Ratayatra procession, again, everyone was changing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Okay, uh, fair enough. I thought maybe it's a local custom, this and that. Uh, maybe this is uh, some established tradition in, in them. Uh, you know, and uh, at one point, I asked my friend, who is a very great... A Madhva scholar who knows all the scriptures, everything which Madhva Acharya wrote, and a very erudite scholar who knows so many different scriptures. And at one point, conversing with him, I asked him, uh, why, uh, please tell me, why, on which authority do you people uh, chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, where... Um, where is it coming from? Uh, what is the root of this tradition? To my great surprise, he became puzzled. And he said, actually, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, at this moment of time, everything you know, uh, came into place and the whole puzzle became uh, clear to me. And I realized that they're still remembering Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu traveling in all the states. <laughs> This is the memory. This is not established in their scriptures. This is the uh, very strong samskara, which was uh, actually uh, imprinted in the consciousness of all these people, inhabitants of uh, South India, by just, uh, you know, one lonely sannyasi 500 years ago, once passing through their village. <laughs> and that was enough uh, for these people 500 years uh, after that to remember this and in honor of this sannyasi to chant uh, in every religious ceremony which is there still to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare, including, you know, this uh, Mayavadis from this Gurukul which I explained and everyone else. So we still can see uh, this effect. People don't remember Lord Chaitanya. I mean, now they have started uh, coming to their senses because of Hare Krishna movement, because of ISKCON, because of preaching of uh, ISKCON devotees in all the states. Uh, but before that, they, I, I mean, they probably didn't even know the name of uh, this sannyasi. This sannyasi just passed by their village. But uh, the impression which he left uh, was so strong that uh, this established tradition is still uh, uh, going on there. Actually, Bhaktivinod Maharaj told me that in a few villages uh, of Kerala, where he preaches and travels, he saw in the temples uh, two on the altar uh, two male figures with their hands raised. And when he would ask, who are this? Uh, they didn't know. <laughs> they still worship this Gornitai deities, but uh, but uh, you know they don't really know who it is. So uh, this is the effect of uh, Lord Chaitanya's preaching, and of course now it's coming to another level. Uh, due to the eagerness of the followers of Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada uh, very clearly speaks in this purports that uh, the uh, followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if they are empowered, they can convert others into this uh, Vaishnava cult, into this Vaishnava religion. And the method of this conversion is very uh, clearly explained here by uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Gaswami. But 
before becoming overly enthusiastic about this method, uh, before trying to imitate this method, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, we should really clearly understand the science uh, behind this method. Because it's, it's easy to say this is just, you know, viral effect and just let's do this pandemic of Hare Krishna uh, chanting, you know, let's imitate Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's carefully examine uh, what uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing. Uh, after leaving uh, Alalanath, where he parted with his uh, followers, his devotees from Jagannath Puri, uh, broken-hearted, uh, crying in the sand of the uh, shore of the ocean, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu turned away and immediately, the first thing which he did, he, he raised his hands up in the air and started chanting this shloka, this verse, Krishna, 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 hey. Uh, oh, Krishna, please protect me. Please take care of me. So this is the first very important uh, element which we should remember. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, while traveling in this South Indian tour, he wanted to show uh, what is the way uh, to preach Krishna consciousness. And the first uh, very important condition to be able to preach Krishna consciousness, to spread Krishna consciousness, is complete surrender to the Lord, uh, surrender to his will. Very clear understanding that I am not doing it myself. It's the Lord who is sending me uh, on this mission and I'm surrendered to him and you please protect me. I'm not going to protect myself. This raised hands, hands raised in the air means that I am not protecting myself. I am not trying to do this and this or this or whatever. <laughs> you know, my hands are completely free and my hands are given to you. I am doing your service you please uh, make me your instrument. And we can see also the example of Srila Prabhupada, the first thing which he does while arriving uh, at America. He uh, writes this very amazing and uh, deep poem, Markini Bhagavata Dharma, the spreading of Bhagavata Dharma uh, in, uh, uh, in America or in the Western world. And there he says, uh, you know, I'm yours. It's a complete prayer of surrender. If Saranagati is expressed in any of the Vaishnava bhajans, you know, this is the place where Saranagati uh, is expressed with utmost force and utmost uh, sincerity. So that's the first point which uh, we should very clearly understand uh, to be able to succeed in this, uh, in this process. And then uh, Krishna Daskaviraj Goswami says uh, that the Lord, uh, while chanting this shloka, would also ask others to do the same. Uh, he was, again, very clearly showing uh, another um, important uh, principle of Preaching. The principle of preaching is that don't ask people something which you don't do yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes we may justify ourselves and, you know, at least I'm preaching the right thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, that may be, but uh, if you're not doing it yourself, then your preaching has no potency, actually has no effect. It's hypocritical. So uh, Lord Chaitanya is again showing uh, by his own example, uh, what the preacher should do. The preacher should, first and foremost, himself chant the holy name all the time. He should put the holy name deep in his heart and not leave the holy name. <laughs> Kirtaniya Sadahari, this, uh, um, this understanding that the Lord is Kirtaniya. Kirtaniya basically literally means worthy of praise. This understanding that the only one who is worthy of uh, being praised is the Lord, 
uh, should be very deeply established within our heart. Otherwise, uh, the next uh, thing which we will do, if, if this is not established in our heart, then we will try to glorify ourselves by the means of preaching. <laughs> we will use or rather misuse the preaching uh, as the means to get prestige, to get honor, to be glorified ourselves. Why? Because uh, Kirtanya Sadahari is not there. We are not really uh, sure that it's only the Lord who should be glorified, not us, not anyone else, but uh, the Lord and his holy name. So <clears throat> the Lord is uh, showing by his example, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing by his example what we should do. Uh, we should chant ourselves first and foremost, and then uh, we have the right uh, to ask anyone else whom we see uh, to do the same. And uh, hopefully they will be attracted by our example. That's another very important uh, element of this whole uh, structure, very, very structured way of preaching. <laughs> so it is uh, uh, clearly said here by, uh, written here by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami that people became completely enamored or enchanted by the way uh, Lord was doing it. Uh, the feelings of the Lord, the emotions of the Lord were so deep, then uh, the people, they were immediately attracted by this emotional force. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not forcing everyone to do it, uh, was not really even preaching to them. Uh, even though later Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami will say that uh, to some worthy people, the Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will explain the philosophy. But uh, his initial uh, impetus, uh, to give this impetus to people, he would just say, just chant Hare Krishna. Uh, as much as Srila Prabhupada was saying this, this his slogan, Prabhupada's slogan, chant and be happy, uh, is, is not a very cheap thing because uh, Prabhupada actually invested into this slogan his realizations, his experience. When Prabhupada says, chant and be happy, he means it uh, because he himself experiences the happiness and because he himself experiences the happiness, and this happiness is being transmitted through the media uh, of the holy name. What I want to say is that if we want to be efficient as a preacher, and we want to be efficient as a preacher because this is our service to the Supreme Lord, uh, we have to be, we not only have to chant the holy name, we have to be happy by chanting the holy name and genuinely happy, not uh, artificially happy, not externally happy, uh, because the holy name uh, will only be effective if it is invested with our realization. So, <clears throat> You know, sometimes people are not happy uh, being devotees. You know, when uh, when sometimes those who consider themselves my uh, disciples, they ask me uh, what is my most important uh, instruction to them. I say that my most important instruction to them is is to be happy in Krishna consciousness <laughs> because everything else will be useless if this basic uh, realization of happiness of Krishna consciousness is not there. We will not be able to uh, uh, influence anyone or even if we be, will be able to influence uh, anyone, uh, it will be cheating because we are not happy ourselves and we are converting others to make them unhappy as mm -hmm. much as uh, we are ourselves, <laughs> you know, misery loves company. You know? <laughs> we want to convert everyone and to make everyone similarly <laughs> miserable as ourselves. You know, there is no point in doing this unless we experience the happiness. And uh, it basically means that we have to have certain realization. 
So <clears throat> next, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraja Swami explains that for some time the person uh, uh, partially converted into the Vaishnava face uh, would follow Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doing the same thing. He would go behind him chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, or chanting Hare Gopal Govinda, chanting Bhajan, or, you know, following Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And again, this is very important. And only after some time, while the person would follow him, uh, being attracted by his example, by his beauty, by his emotions and everything else, only after some time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all of a sudden would, uh, turn around and embrace such a person. And this is the final step in the conversion. Without that, you know, people is half, the person is half converted. <laughs> the main point is that uh, uh, the this spiritual power, which is, as Srila Prabhupada explains, following Bhaktivinoda Thakur, which is the combination of uh, Samvit Shakti and uh, Hladini Shakti. The two, or Chit Shakti, yeah, Samvit Shakti and Hladini Shakti, two uh, most powerful energies of the Supreme Lord, spiritual energies of the Supreme Lord. Uh, this Bhava or Prema is nothing but combination of these two energies. It's very clearly explained by uh, Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, where he explains the nature of Bhava. He says that uh, this is uh, uh, th this is the spiritual energy, Vishesha spiritual energy, the special portion of the spiritual energy, not just general Chit Shakti, uh, but the uh, special portion of spiritual energy, uh, which is the combination or the union of uh, Hladini Shakti and Sandit Shakti, the energy of bliss, uh, of the Supreme Lord and uh, the energy of cognizance, the energy of um, consciousness or, uh, or knowledge, as Prabhupada would, would uh, translate it. So <clears throat> it's very important, again, uh, to uh, take into consideration this little detail. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would not embrace uh, each and every one immediately. Like now there is one, uh, you know, famous lady preacher. Uh, oh. She is living in Kerala. <laughs> and she is embracing everyone uh, at the first meeting. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not like this. <laughs> he would embrace somebody, but only after a certain period of strict following behind him. <laughs> when the person would chant and would prove his sincerity, and not only prove his sincerity, but also uh, preliminarily purify his heart to be able to hold this spiritual potency. Because this spiritual potency is, is, is amazing and potent, and our heart has to be trained to hold this spiritual potency. Sometimes uh, devotees prematurely, they, you know, dream about, Prema, and they say, why Prema is not coming to me, why Lord is so stingy, why I'm, you know, I'm following and following. And it's just a very simple. Our heart is not capable of holding it. <laughs> there is no power to hold this spiritual energy because first our heart should be preliminarily cleansed. You cannot really, uh, you know, pour the new wine into the old how you call it, into the old bag, because uh, it will not be able to hold uh, this new wine. So this new wine, the uh, divine wine of uh, Krishna Prema, uh, of love of God, it, uh, we have to have certain preliminary period of purification. And of course, in case of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this purification was uh, very short and uh, very quick. Uh, in the case of other people, you know, it may take some time, but still, nevertheless, the principle is there. Uh, you know, if we want to give 
to spread Krishna consciousness, not just an external form, simile of Krishna consciousness, not just external uh, appearance of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> if we really want to spread Krishna consciousness, we have to be Krishna conscious ourselves. It means that we have to be in touch with the spiritual energy. We have to become uh, the transmitters of the spiritual energy to transmit it uh, further. You know, we can be the, you know, uh, <laughs> we have to really imbibe this spiritual energy deeply within ourselves. Then only the viral effect uh, will be real. Otherwise, it will be just, you know, another um, fad, another fashion of Kali Yuga. You know, sometimes we are trying to adopt uh, this means, but we really have to understand the deep science behind the preaching techniques or preaching methods of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You know, we can only give bhakti. Bhakti is only coming from heart to heart. It's a very uh, intimate process. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing this. When he's saying uh, embrace, uh, we should understand that it was a literal event when he would embrace somebody. But we should also understand that this embrace of Lord Chaitanya uh, means very intimate and close relationship uh, between the spiritual master or between the preacher and somebody whom he preaches. You know, this transmission of the spiritual energy will not take place if there is no close relationship between the preacher and uh, the one whom he preaches. Srila Prabhupada used to say that, uh, you know, you, the preacher has to shed the gallons of blood <laughs> to turn uh, anyone into, the, into uh, Krishna consciousness, if it's real Krishna consciousness. It's not a cheap process, what I want to say. Embrace means that you have to invest your heart into his heart. Uh, there has to be heart-to-heart relationship, if there is no heart-to-heart -heart relationship, if it's just a superficial imitation of the same process, again, uh, the success uh, will not really be there. Uh, <clears throat> and then, of course, when uh, the person is invested with the spiritual energy and his heart is bubbling with the spiritual energy, it's overflowing his heart, he cannot really uh, do anything else. He will just preach to others because he's so happy. He cannot stop it, you know. And uh, as uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, that whoever will see him uh, will be infected by uh, this uh, virus of Krishna consciousness. We are all living in this very strange uh, time uh, when uh, everyone is afraid of viruses. But at the same time, we also want to spread this pandemic of Krishna consciousness. And that's definitely a uh, viral disease. <laughs> <clears throat> and, uh, you know, to be able to uh, effectively infect others, we should not have mask over our, <laughs> our mouths. <laughs> We should really very loudly chant the holy name, but with full energy and conviction, not just the shadow of the holy name, not just Namabas, but the real holy name. And for that, of course, we uh, have to struggle uh, in our solitary bhajan and in our, you know, in our uh, uh, desire to preach uh, the uh, Krishna consciousness. You know, we have to shed the tears uh, of uh, sincere desire to give Krishna consciousness to somebody else. And then we will be empowered. The empowerment is an easy process, but we have to be prepared to be empowered. That's a difficult part of the process. Otherwise, the empowerment is an easy process, as uh, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami explains. But we really have to have this sincere desire uh, within ourselves. And, you know, my time is uh, over. I, I can go a little more, a few more minutes because we started a little late. 
uh, to explain this topic. Uh, but again, what I want to say, the main thing which I want to say is that uh, to be able to spread Krishna consciousness, you have to be Krishna conscious yourself. And Krishna consciousness is not cheap. Uh, it's the matter of purity of heart. It's the matter of pure desire to please the Lord. Basically, uh, we oftentimes forget the basic definition of Krishna consciousness in our uh, uh, eagerness to spread Krishna consciousness. <laughs> uh, that's a natural human phenomenon. You know, uh, sometimes we are so eager to spread something that we forget what we are spreading, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what exactly it is. Uh, but um, uh, Krishna consciousness, uh, which is defined uh, by Srila Rupa Goswami in this famous verse, Anyabi Lashate Sunyam, Jnana Karma Dhyanavritam Anukulyena Krishna Anusilanam Bhakti Ruttama. Uh, so Krishna consciousness means constant desire, permanent desire within the heart uh, to do something which is pleasing to Krishna. Up to the point of completely forgetting what is pleasing to me and what is not pleasing to me. Until this moment of time when we forget what is pleasing to me we cannot consider ourselves uh, Krishna conscious. And I, I mean, it's an unfortunate reality. I, you know, I, uh, I'm sitting here, I'm not claiming that I'm on this level. I'm just reminding myself uh, how, uh, uh, how it is not so cheap. Uh, basically, and uh, this is the example which Srila Prabhupada showed to us, because uh, he sincerely showed this example that for him it doesn't matter whether it is pleasing for him or not, whether there is convenience for him or not. He was ready to take any inconveniences to do something which is pleasing to him. How does he know what is pleasing to him? He knows what is to the Lord. How, how do we know what is pleasing to the Supreme Lord? Uh, because it's pleasing to my spiritual master. This is how the parampara works. We don't know what, whether it's pleasing to the Supreme Lord or not. We may not be sure. We may uh, imagine or speculate something. But if our spiritual master says that this is what will please the Supreme Lord and we do this with this desire, I'm going to do something which is pleasing to the Supreme Lord and it doesn't matter for me whether it is pleasing to myself or not, uh, then uh, only at this moment of time we are Krishna conscious. Actually, uh, <coughs> Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains that Krishna consciousness does not even start uh, with the level of nishta. It really starts with the level of ruchi because only when we have this strong taste uh, for the processes or for the, uh, yeah, for the processes of Krishna consciousness, for the holy name, uh, we are in touch with the real holy name and we will be able to forget our own conveniences or inconveniences, uh, comforts or discomforts, and we will be able to uh, spread this. Having said this, I'm not trying to discourage anyone else uh, who is not on the level of Ruchi. I'm trying to encourage everyone to as quickly as possible to... Uh, reach this stage uh, because this is the real stage. The Krishna consciousness starts at this stage. Before that, it's a shadow of Krishna consciousness, which is important. We have to start somewhere. But uh, to reach this stage, we uh, very clearly have to remember ourselves. What does it mean to be Krishna conscious? It means that at least when I <clears throat> sit uh, and start speaking, at least when I take my beats and start chanting, when I sit behind harmonium and start uh, chanting the holy name in Kirtan, I first have to say to myself, I'm doing it uh, to please the Lord. And I should say this before I, start, uh, before I started uh, doing some devotional activity. That is very important thing because uh, there are, 
two different processes of bhakti. One process of bhakti, I'm doing something, and then at the end I say, uh, Krishna Arpanamas too. Idam Krishna, Idam Namama. Krishna, this is for you. I'm offering this to you. But uh, Krishna consciousness, if it's in its pure variety, means that before doing any devotional activity, before, before, the first thing which we should do, why I'm doing this, what is my motivation, why do I chant the holy name, why do I chant it on beats, why do I preach, why do I speak in front of you, why do I read Srimad Bhagavatam, why, why, <laughs> what is the reason, what is the motivation, the motivation is I want to please the Lord. Because the Lord will be pleased if I'm reading Srimad Bhagavatam, if I'm chanting the holy name, if I'm doing kirtan, or if I'm preaching. So if this is the motivation, and in the beginning, when this motivation is not yet completely uh, uh, overwhelmed, we're not overwhelmed by this motivation, if, if it's not... If we're not overtaken by this motivation, if this motivation is not really firmly established within our heart, it basically means that before this stage of Ruchi, we have to remind ourselves uh, it again and again and again. I am doing it to please the Supreme Lord. I am doing it to please my spiritual master. I am doing it because um, I want their pleasure. I want to see how they are pleased. And uh, if this is established very clearly, then uh, there is a hope that something which we do will have the real tangible effect on other people. And having this uh, uh, tangible effect on other people, it will uh, change their lives. And uh, in this way, we will really serve the mission of our spiritual master. And the Lord will be pleased with us and will give us uh, the contact with these two uh, most important and glorious uh, spiritual energies of the Lord, uh, Sanvit Shakti and uh, Hladini Shakti. Otherwise, he will not trust us. This Bhakti Shakti uh, or Krishna Prema is the most uh, cherished treasure of the Supreme Lord. <laughs> and uh, he will not uh, he will not um, throw the pearls in front of swine. <laughs> he will not do this. <laughs> he will not entrust to us uh, these uh, energies, uh, most important, most pure energies of his, unless we become completely trustworthy. And trustworthiness means sincerity of each uh, of our endeavors. Uh, in uh, this Krishna consciousness movement. So we have to remind ourselves again and again and again, and then this viral effect will take place. And um, <clears throat> everything else which is described here uh, will repeat itself, and uh, uh, we will become the real followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Before that time, <clears throat> we're trying, and that's glorious itself, <clears throat> but uh, we also have to <clears throat> be realistic about uh, what we can do. Uh, uh, but definitely we should try. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, in this way, uh, the prediction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will uh, be fulfilled. Prithiviti Achayata Nagaradi Gram Sarvatra Prachara Hoide Moranam. So I guess now I should stop according to the schedule of our event. I, uh, I wanted to tell a story, but uh, anyway, it's maybe some other time. So, Pancharatna Prabhu, I, <clears throat> what shall we do now? <clears throat> I don't hear you. You're probably muted. I am. <laughs> yes, yes, I had to do so, so that uh, no extraneous sound would enter into your wonderful talk. Um, so much to think about, so much to reflect on that you gave us today about how we can deeply serve the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is needed, what uh, empowerment we have to aspire for. Um, we do have some more time for, for questions. If, if anyone has a question, they can post it um, on, on our comments in regards to, your, to, to what you've talked about. Um, let me just see. 
Okay. So, well, <laughs> yes, please, can you, can we hear the story? <laughs> so <that's laughs> the <laughs> okay, so I guess, uh, I guess you have to answer. You have to tell us a story. <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> that's a very interesting story. It's not so common. It's a story about Lord Chaitanya, which is taken from Govinda Kadacha. The <clears throat> this source of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's biographies um, is somewhat questionable, but the story is so good uh, that even though the source may be a little questionable, the story is very typical and probably. The, the, the story is, is good itself, and you will hear this story. You might have heard it. This the story which actually <clears throat> took place uh, while Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling with four of his companions from uh, Navadvip to Arisa, and they already left Bengal, which was uh, ruled by Mohammedans, uh, and Arisa was much more peaceful state under the um, uh, able uh, rulership of Maharaja Prataparudra, and it was a Hindu state, peaceful Hindu state. <clears throat> and they felt much more free, uh, you know, in, uh, while traveling in other places. Sometimes, uh, of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was completely fearless, but all the people which were around him were quite fearful <laughs> by by his enthusiasm to spread uh, Hindu religion, quote-unquote, <laughs> or chanting uh, the holy name of the Lord. But in Arisa, they were more relaxed, and uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was uh, going a little ahead because he was so eager to uh, reach Jagannath Puri, and uh, he reached one uh, <clears throat> place where uh, in the village pond, the lobby, the washerman was uh, washing the clothes. <clears throat> and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw this dhobi who was completely absorbed in this uh, stupid process of washing clothes, you know, by beating it on the, uh, on the stone. And um, immediately the compassion uh, overwhelmed his heart. He was thinking, most probably, that... Here is the human being who is endowed with this rare opportunity to serve the Supreme Lord. And instead, he is just wasting his whole life by beating this, you know, dirty uh, clothes uh, on the stone. And um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approached this Dobi washerman and he said, please chant Hare Krishna. Say Haribo. Say Haribo. And this Dobi was very suspicious because he saw... He, he didn't even look at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He didn't want to look. He only saw the orange clothes and he thought, oh, some beggar has come. <laughs> you know, so he, he said, I don't have time and started beating and beating and beating. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was relentless. He was begging and again and again and again, please chant Haribo, please chant Haribo. And ultimately, uh, Dobi said, okay, uh, you know, no, uh, 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 first, Dobby said, you know, I, I cannot do this because, because uh, you know, I have to earn money for my living. You know, I have to do my job. And sometimes we have similar experience. We ask somebody to chant Hare Krishna and they say, I have no time. I have to earn money. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what he did, it's also very important and glorious. He said, it's no problem. You please chant Hari Bol and I will wash the clothes instead of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will free you. I'll give you some free time. I will do it. <laughs> so at this point, uh, it was too much for uh, Dobby. He thought it's not good. You know, some sannyasi is asking me to, to do this. I, I cannot allow the sannyasi to wash the clothes because it's a dirty job. And uh, he said, Okay, what should I do? Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Just say Haribo. He said, Haribo. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Say it once more. He said, Haribo. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Say it once more. He said, Haribo. And then when he said Haribo, third time, he started dancing and laughing and saying, Haribo, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And he became completely mad. Uh, and, uh, 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 you know, and he was dancing in a mad way. 
and uh, the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu approached and they saw this amusing scene, you know. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sitting and watching and he's very happy, you know. <laughs> this dog is chanting and, and dancing. And then and the wife of this uh, washerman comes with the plate of rice and she looks at his at her husband and she's wondering what's going on and she said i i never i never thought that you're such a good dancer you know <laughs> where did you learn dancing <laughs> you know but he doesn't hear his wife which is itself a sign of spiritual ecstasy because otherwise you know the voice of the wife is very you know, easily penetrating your heart. So <laughs> he, he couldn't hear the wife. And, uh, uh, you know, the wife is coming closer and she looks at his eyes and his eyes are completely blank, you know. And she runs back to the village and says, my husband is possessed by ghost. There is some oh. ghost possessed my husband. He is just dancing like a madman. And the whole village is running there and they all see this scene and uh, they're wondering what's going on and then somebody who is very uh, bold the boldest one uh, uh, wants to kind of bring him back to the senses and he runs to this person to this dobby washerman and takes his hand and you know just pulls him down sit down just be quiet and as soon as he touches his hand the surge of spiritual energy <laughs> comes to his body and he starts chanting, Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. But he is not completely absent minded. So instead of chanting and dancing himself, he runs to his villagers and starts touching every one of his villagers, starting with the wife of this Dobby. <laughs> and everyone starts <laughs> dancing and laughing and, and chanting. That's the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's preaching technique. <laughs> we cannot really imitate it, but that's the story which was uh, told. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew what he wants to do. He wanted the whole world to dance. And actually, this is what um, Nityananda Prabhu said while in the last Kirtan, before going to the South India tour, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing kirtan with all the villagers from Alalnath and uh, all his devotees and everyone is dancing and Nityananda Prabhu is looking at this and said, you know, very soon the whole world will be dance, will be dancing like this and chanting the holy name. Anyway, that's the story. I don't know if... Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. That was so wonderful. And that's really viral. I mean, that's a, uh, the, the ultimate viral effect. Well, we can aspire, right? To, to have that kind of, to be that kind of medium, to be that kind of, uh, uh, how, how Srila Prabhupada put it, you know, that the iron rod, when the iron rod gets put in the fire, it becomes like the iron rod. So if we can get ourselves really in the fire, then we can transmit in the same way. This should be our aspiration. This is the beginning of our series. Thank you, Maharaj. You've really set the tone, I think, for us to, to aspire to see how by understanding, you know, like you, you I think you, you brought out in the beginning, it's not it's not technique, it's principle. And it's it's what are the, the underlying principles that we have to understand in order to uh, actually spread Krishna consciousness, see the holy names in every town and village. So we invite everybody to uh, share this with, uh, with everyone, uh, what you've watched. Um, come back tomorrow. We're, we're, we're going to be here every evening, evening in India, <laughs> morning in the U.S., and uh, in between in other places. Uh, and we'll be doing this every day from now until, uh, until Gorpurnima. Uh, and trying to really explore, and try, in, in one sense, we're also creating a, a repository of this that uh, can be shared for our society going forward. So I look forward to tomorrow and the next day. And I thank you again, Maharaj, for 
Okay. There is Long you said Silpa Karini, some question from Silpa Karini, or is this is already uh let's see. Yeah. Can you see uh, it? Okay, yeah, there is something here. Just mm -hmm. want to know what is pleasing to Lord Chaitanya if there's no Harinam, there's no chanting, no preaching. <laughs> I think you made that pretty clear. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I made it very clear. Yeah. She, she Prabhupada made it very clear what is pleasing yeah. to this. What is pleasing? Of course. We have to we have to serve the mission. Amara Gyai Hoy Guru Tare Desh. Thank you. Okay. We'll call it Thank you, and, Thank you very uh, much. Hare Krishna. Look forward to, to seeing you also. And by the way, just a, a quick note for everyone who missed it. Yesterday, we we had an extraordinary event to Maharaj. I hope that you may have also been able to tune in. If not, please, please do. Uh, we're organizing all the material on our 10-hour long video uh, on the uh, inauguration of number one, Ultadunga Road, Ultadunga Junction mm -hmm. Road. Mm -hmm. This uh, promises to be a, a real milestone for our society and our movement and the whole Gaudiya Vaishnava movement. Uh, here it is, yes, the birthplace of a revolution. Uh, I, we all felt, uh, I was very privileged to be there, and we, we really felt that there is, that the work that has been done has called into that place and called into our movement some energy that uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and Srila Prabhupada uh, have that kind of energy that you spoke of. We hope that we can catch it, catch the virus. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Jai you very much. Thank you.